one was built in 1947. I told you that, didn't I? They're not for everybody to run. Okay. We didn't get to work at the saw shop like we planned as much. And here's why. We had a real problem with the water drop. The horses, in their divine wisdom, decided they were going to wreck the hydrant. You know, we had a yard hydrant. They bent it right over and got it leaking. So we had to go to a good friend of mine there, a guy I built a dump truck for, borrow his excavator, and dig holes. Now, you can probably tell by the way I'm squinting. We're in a little bit of a heat wave. We're not used to it. We're used to 50s and 60s and cloudy. So when you're popping over 90s and you're trying to do the work we just did, it was tough on us. We got it. We got it. Now, we had to replace the whole water line. It was time. It needed it. Because the, the water line was in there probably 20 years. And... Uh, it was, have, it was showing its age, so we did it. Now, I've done a lot of this kind of work, and I'm sure many of you have too. It is not hard to dig a trench, put a hydrant in, and connect in next to your well, which our well is to the left of me. It's just not hard. But it becomes hard. Okay, here's what happens. We came down here first, wanted to get the line connected, and we had 100 foot of one inch line to go to the barn. And we dug it up. It was, water line was a little deeper than what I thought it was, but I was glad to see that. It was down about five feet. We get to digging, everything's good, okay, fine. We got the water line, we got the electric. So what happens, I moved to the opposite side of the ditch, do just you're supposed to, get the dirt away from that side a little bit, and another water line, another electric line. That one I clipped off. Well, we had the electric shut off to the pump, no big deal. There was two water lines, two electric lines running to my well from the house. One wasn't being used. Right beside it was one it was. And guess what one fed the house? Yeah, you got it, it's the one I clipped off. So now all of a sudden, on a hot darn day, we got a water line caught in an electric line. We can handle that. Right behind where Colin is, behind the camera, which you can't see, is our pole that our uh, phone line comes in. Well, I had to turn around, make an adjustment. I'm looking up the sun. That phone line has always been so low, you can't hardly get a, a pickup truck under it. So you got to put the knuckle down on the excavator and go under it. No problem. Did that. I looked up. And I said, well, I got about a foot. I'm good to go. That grease fitting on the top of the boom, sticking up, right? Guess what? Took out the phone. So now we don't have electric. We don't have water. We don't have a phone. And this is where the fun starts. Colin gets in this hole. He's pretty moto about this. What's it like being in the bottom of a hole for three hours in the hot sun? Felt like I was uh, just about digging my own grave. <laughs> it does bad. Didn't yeah, it? I was boiling. So we put our line together in a T. We had to get three times a bigger hole than what we thought just to identify which line was which and what the problem was. We actually ended up uh, connecting one of the water lines. Uh, obviously, the wire was different and turning the pump on, yeah. So we identified that's what it was. So we start there. So we get our plumbing supplies at Lowe's. And we buy way more clamps than we need. You know how you double clamp these water lines. And you heat them just a little bit, draw them down. Over half the clamps. You can't even barely get them two fingers screwdriver tight, and they start jumping. They start breaking. Jump clamps. So that means another trip to town. So we do all that. 
And by the time we get done digging, now this is old riverbed, way like tens of thousands of years ago. This whole valley is. And uh, an unbelievable amount of rock and gravel in here. Now, because this is a main area that we drive, we, you can drive the frost down. So we had to go, well, it was about four and a half, five foot deep. Three foot frost line here, but we buried it deep. And here is a little bit of a clip of what the holes looked like when they were. So after days of problem solving, trips to town, being overheated in the hot sun, and just keep right on digging and working. To get this trough and this hydrant to do this was more work than it should have been. Right over here where this two by four is, is where it used to be. Now, Here's what the problem was. Just for you, Bill Block, here's the deal. Nothing goes according to plan some days, does it? No, it doesn't. My buddy Tony over here, he was appreciative. This right here guy is helping the whole time. They'll walk right beside you. They will. See, he appreciate. he came down, he ain't thirsty. He came down here to get a drink. He wants to show off for the camera. He wanted camera. to be on video. <laughs> yep, just wanted to be on video. Look at me, he's drinking. Look at I can drink. Well, anyways. You wouldn't even think he's drinking, but looking at him. He barely know. got his lip in the water even. Yeah, he does. He's just sucking it up. Yeah, he's all tanked up. He says that's enough of that. Holding water in their mouth. They like doing that. So anyways, we're a little ways from the house. We're hot, we're tired. You ever get them days where you're just overworked to the point you don't want to walk 100 feet to go get a bucket? This trough was fairly full. I said, Colin, just dump that. I can't. I says, so he starts getting a shovel and he's out throwing the water out. I mean, if you, can, if you can't run, you walk. If you can't walk, you crawl. Yeah, you, some of you guys know exactly what I'm, where that came from, don't you? Uh-huh. You're dead. So, I'll show you right here my method of bailing out a watering trough. This is how we solve problems around here. Excavator is thirsty. Um, it's got a dead bird in it. I know you like that, Daryl. The southern cooking. So, we get the water trough dump. I get this great big friggin' hole dug right beside the barn, right where you've seen the trough. And you'll never believe what you run into. I've dug many holes and I've found some of the darnest things you've ever, ever seen. But uh, today, well, it was two days ago now. This uh, this really took the cake. What it was, we ran into concrete, balls of concrete. We ran into a set of dumbbells, dug them up. And you'll not believe this, we've been here a long time, but we got into a whole bunch of clothing that don't rot. Yeah. Somebody obviously buried something at some point. Quite a long time, but it had been 25 years ago or better. It had been earlier than that, who knows. But, so you get rid of the debris, and everywhere that you go, there's nothing but rock. And we're getting, we're getting rock right here. That's like, this is normal right here, this piece. Yeah, I think that's gonna work pretty good, didn't it? That's normal. Lots of it. I'll tell you where it comes from. 
up here at the top of these hills, way up here, there's rock cuts, rock outcrops, cliffs. This rock, you'll find it laying in woods from them cliffs all the way down to this valley floor. It comes right through. We got a couple trees cut in the past. Have you seen that? Yes, we do. Now, so we get our water going. Nothing's buried yet. Had to solder the electric lines. You know, that's 220. Yeah, we did all that. Weather sealed it. Okay, so we're good as gold. We got the water going. Now, when we're working and we got a mission, we don't stop. There ain't no breaks. There ain't nothing. Somebody hands you a glass of water, you just keep right on going. That's the way it is. Chug it. Well, I got to the point where I couldn't spit. <laughs> nothing. It was it was bad. Cullen was the same way. So before we we backfilled the hydrant, filled it, filled the trough, we went in the house. Now at this point you realize everything that go go wrong could did. Right? No electric, no water, no phone. And he was on the yard. <laughs> Barb says, I don't know what's wrong with that toilet, but it's running constant. I go, oh, no. That's got to be unrelated, don't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> we didn't do it. <laughs> so here's what my solution temporarily was. This is taken out of the box. I wasn't going right to town. Shut the water off the toilet. You got to shut it off everywhere. That's what you, you just learn that after a while. Shut it off. We put these new band clamps that we got. Uh, they're they're like packs, but they're for black pipe. They make Pinch a clamp. PAX style clamp for that black pipe for water, guys. I want you to know that. Now they try to sell you these hoggering players to put that together. Your PAX players fit them. So yeah, just just remember that. And then you don't have to heat that sealed up. You can put three or four of mine because you got room. Because you know your barbs about yay long. You can put as many on as you want it. But uh, you, you just, I recommend if you're doing water lines, get wherever you buy your water line. Now, supposedly, you can buy the PEC style clamp that fits. Believe me, it's going to save you so much time. <laughs> that save you I could so not much get those time. other clamps to work for nothing. I was getting mad. So I got up this morning early. And I came out here, and I watered my zucchinis, and I watered my little cucumbers over there, my pickling cucumbers. Got them watered. Got fruit trees down there in the side yard. Come in here, water the greenhouse. First thing I do, go in there, and I get overrun by a tomato plant. One of them is reaching right out over its box, waiting to grab somebody. Yeah. So I watered the other side first to see. He wasn't moving, so we got the watering done. Now, I was going to show it to you on this one, but I'm not going to. We got a watermelon patch, cantaloupes too. Put them sugar babies in. I always want to try them. They're doing swimmingly. Here's a joke. I want to tell you what I was going to do to Barb. And I, it was such a good joke that I didn't do it. We put them, we grew, we started our watermelons. They got about that big before we put them out there a few weeks ago. And uh, the other day, Barb and I was up town and we seen this sugar baby watermelon. I said, boy, I ought to buy that. Colin says, we don't like store watermelons. It was me and him, not Barb and him. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It was Colin and I. This is proper, right? <laughs> Colin and I. Us, us guys is. Us guys. They use guys. Hey. So. I was gonna bring this watermelon home, put it beside one of them teeny little tiny plants on the back side. Barb and I get up early, have coffee, visit for a while. That's about the time we get to visit, way early in the morning. And then all oh, heck breaks loose and it's a busy day. That's just that's my life. That's my life. But I was gonna look out the window part. What the heck do you see out there? Because right out the kitchen window you can see our little garden where we got the well and watermelons and muskmelons too. Antelope, if you prefer. I'd have got her on that one. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm sure glad I used that freaking real good fertilizer. We got a watermelon. 
Wouldn't that have been funny? Okay, guys, back at it Monday. We got some new parts. Hopefully, nothing more goes wrong. We have dealt for the last six months with one thing after another constant. More than you ever meet the eye. Uh, hopefully we get it out of our system soon. I guess tomorrow's Father's Day. Barb insisted we go riding over to Tall Pines. I says, no, I'm not going riding. She says, why not? I mean, well, Colin told me first. She says, Barb said we're going riding. And nah, I'll believe that. Why not, Dan? I said, because there's too much to do. I said, she wouldn't say that. An hour later, Barb comes in. And we all get together. She says, I want you guys to go riding over Tall Pines. I says, what? She says, you'd like to do that. Get your bikes out. Have a good day. It's Father's Day. I said, no. I said, it's a trap. That's a man trap. They're going to give you a few hours of personal pleasure, and you're going to pay for that. That's just like a $1,200 stimulus check, isn't it? I got that one in good. You no, it ain't like it. that. It ain't <laughs> like that around here, but that is a good joke. Uh, I did get used to living indoors years ago. There was a time I didn't care. I didn't like it indoors. But I got used to it, and she's a good cook. And I'm going to tell you something. What Barbara wants, she gets when it's time, when we can. But I'll tell you what, I'm not Mr. Easy to live with. Uh, I've had one more than one woman tell me, if you were my husband, I'd divorce you. But I got an answer for that. If you were my wife, I'd pay for it. But it ain't that way with Barb and I. We meet in the middle, we take care of business. My son Colin is a huge asset. He gets to work with old pops at his old age, doing things that's tough for me to do. And the whole time he's learning and he knows it. And uh, when things really suck, Colin, like you gotta admit, that really sucked the other day. There's one point things got bad, didn't that? Yeah, it was getting pretty brutal. And, uh, <laughs> I've had worse, but. What do you I'd... say about that? Suck it up. Suck it up. Yep. Embrace the suck. Then you get it done like this. We still got to pick up a lot of rock, do some raking. I moved some hay down here. We're going to put uh, uh, some grass seed back in. Try to return to normalcy. All of you out there, have a good Father's Day. If you're not a father, have a good Father's Day anyway. You've got a father. If you don't have, adopt one. Okay, that's it for this video. Goodbye.